So, welcome back to this second part of, our, of the first practical session. Now we are working with a notebook, hello world, data set and data loader. And the goal of this tutorial, it is to give you an introduction into a PyTorch data set and data loader. Now this notebook includes a basic code for training a model that uh, predicts uh, whether a given photographer was taken uh, in the 19th century or in the, or in the 20th century. Now the notebook is organized as uh, following. First, we're going to start with data pre-processing, then with data loading. After that, we have creation and configuration of a model, training the model and model evaluation. But like I said, we're going to focus on these first two points. Why we're doing this? Because this is actually the topic of the second, um, the second session of this computer vision school. So now, as usual, we begin by importing the necessary libraries. Here again, we provided some, um, some uh, short definition, and in this case, we had some uh, more, uh, more libraries. Um, important here are Torch and Torch Vision that we are using for training uh, for our machine learning tasks. So we start, usually, you actually start a deep learning, uh, deep, <laughs> Uh, deep learning uh, pipeline uh, with uh, pre-processing. Now, this is also known as transformation process. Uh, in this stage, we prepare our raw data to be in the right format and structure to be later on used in, uh, for, deep learning, uh, for a deep learning model. So below, uh, we see a specific uh, steps that we are uh, taking for our image data and uh, why they are actually important. First, we're going to convert our images to RGB, meaning to uh, color images. Uh, this is not always necessary. You could also use uh, black and white images. You just use a grayscale. It uh, actually depends on the images that you have. But if you have kind of a mixture of black and white and color images, you will want to standardize that and uh, just choose the one, uh, one type of images. Now, what is this important is to always to know what kind of images your model is actually expecting. So if your model uh, uh, expects uh, color images, then you will have to transform uh, all the images into color. Then afterwards, we are going to resize the image uh, to the size of 224 to 24 pixels. That's actually a must. You really have to do this. All the images have to be the same size. Um, afterwards, we are going to convert uh, the images to a tensor. Why? Because the neural networks are actually working with tensors. They are not uh, working with the raw pixels. Uh, so this is uh, an appropriate uh, format that we have to use. And at the end, we're going to normalize the images. Now, normalizing images refers to the process of kind of standardizing the pixel values. And what we would like to achieve here is just to, to kind of prevent to have some odd layers because they could actually, um, they could actually um, be kind of too important in, our, uh, in the learning process. So... How do we do that? We need just four lines of code. It's kind of very easy. So first we convert all the images to color images. Then we uh, resize the images. Then we transform them to tensor and we normalize. Uh, and in the end, we normalize the images. Now here I have a very quick uh, side note uh, about the input shape. Uh, why do we have this? Because uh, you probably are <laughs> going to see quite a lot of uh, error messages saying input must have the same shape. So what is actually this shape? The shape refers, uh, we are speaking here about the dimension. For instance, a uh, color image uh, with a size of 224 to 24 would have dimensions, uh, dimension uh, would have a shape 224 to 24, 3. Or if we are uh, free, is actually uh, for meaning free uh, color channels. In our case, red, green, and blue. Uh, in every case, a red, uh, a red, green, and blue. And if we would use a grayscale, we would have a number uh, here, uh, a number one. So now uh, that our transformation is defined and also already, right? yeah, exactly. 
So we're gonna take, uh, we are kind of ready for the next step. And this is to prepare uh, and load our images using two important components uh, provided by PyTorch. Uh, these are a data set and data loader. Now, here in this notebook, we provided two blocks of code that actually achieve uh, the same goal. They bo both actually load the data, but they do it in a kind of a slightly different manner. In option one, you're going to see here, and option two uh, below, we are using a pre built PyTorch class known as image folder. And in the option uh, one, we are creating our custom class. So now for uh, I think that is great idea to know both these both possibilities and at the beginning maybe uh, the using the image class uh, image folder class it's a bit easier uh, but the reality is that at, uh, that the most of the usual way it is to create uh, your own custom class because this gives you much more flexibility than the pre-built uh, pre class. So now below, um, here below are some resources if you want to know more, uh, more about uh, these both possibilities. But now um, let's just clarify what is actually the difference between the data set and data loader. This kind of sounds very similar, at least uh, for, for me, uh, but they do differ. A data set is actually a data, it's actually our data um, uh, that we're going to, later on used to train our model on, but pre-process in a certain way. Now, in our, in our case, this is the pre-process that we actually defined. Um, if we would like to uh, train our model on the whole data at once, this is actually a very bad idea. It's, a total, it's actually a no-go, because this is very memory intensive and very inefficient. So, a better way or the right way to do this is to use uh, um, batches. Batches are actually small chunks of images and batching allows then our model to train always just on a portion of the whole data set at, at the time. And this is actually this actually reduces the memory usage and, and it is actually uh, indeed uh, training is much more effective. Now in practice the, this to do that, we are using data loaders. Now, in practice, this uh, data loader generates the batches for us, but also makes it kind of very easy to, to create this training loop, because otherwise we would have to code this manually. Now, however, in, in data loader, it, it is not like th that we can just take uh, load kind of all the picture directly, uh, pictures, uh, images directly to the data loader. That's uh, not possible. First, we have to uh, convert them to a specific uh, format. So this long story short, it would be that in we prepare our data using a data set and then we pass this data set to a data loader which then handles the batching and the loading the images into the model. So I really hope this was clear. Um, now for the option one, here we have uh, some steps we are going to take. First, we're going to define the path for the directory containing the images. That's here. I haven't even shown you, but the images are actually here. Um, afterwards, we're going to set the patch size and the labels. Uh, we're going to uh, load the image data from the, this specified directories and we're going to process it. In this case, uh, this is uh, the result of it is going to be a PyTorch dataset, but a one dataset for all the image uh, for all the images. Afterwards, we're going to divide this dataset into two uh, sets. One it will be a training set, and uh, the uh, the second uh, we call it a test set. Sometimes it's also called a validation set. Now to get um, to do that, we're going to first get a, a number of items, so number of images in our data set. Then we're going to generate a shuffled list of these uh, images. Why we are doing this? Because we are actually, uh, our images are actually separated in two different uh, directories. So when, if we want to shuffle the, the order, it 
will probably happen that we're going to have all the images from the first uh, uh, we're going to have all the images from the first directory in uh, train model and maybe some from the second directory and our test model will contain just the images from the uh, second model and that's of course uh, not the way to do that uh, to do this so after that we're gonna again split just this in indices at first into training and uh, test data set and afterwards we're gonna create the, those two data sets now in code this looked like this it's kind of very short I would say first here is our path uh, to our images Oh, one more very important thing. If you are using this option one and image folder, then the, the structure of the folders, it has to be as it is in our case. You always have to have the images separated by, in, in different uh, directories. Uh, the, other version, uh, the, the other possibility I have mentioned before with this uh, having all the images in one folder and the corresponding CSV file, this would not work in this case. So, here we just defined uh, batch size and labels. Uh, we actually hard code the labels name. This, uh, the better way it would be to read kind of uh, to read the name directory names, but it's okay. Um, here is our we are defining our uh, data set. So the the data set containing all the images. We use the uh, we're gonna use the image folder class as I uh, mentioned before image directory so the, the where our images are and the transformation uh, process this is actually the process the uh, pre-process that we define uh, above so now that our data set is ready we're going to take the next steps to divide them into a training and test data set to do that like i said we have to shuffle to uh, shuffle the images and that's what happened here exactly afterwards we're gonna now we uh, we said we're gonna take the first 800 images for our training set and the rest we're gonna set uh, uh, we're gonna ta take for our test uh, set um, the last step it is to create uh, to create a data set. It is also kind of very simple. We use the uh, class subset. We we take the, all the indices. No, we, pardon. We take the original data set uh, containing all the images and the indices. Uh, uh, how we would like to uh, split the data set. Okay, now let's just wait or no maybe I'm, go I'm just gonna run this and afterwards now we come to the option two like I said the goal is actually the same it's just the way is a little bit different but not even so different first again we have to define where our images are again we have to shuffle the images in this case we do it a little bit differently but the result is the same we split the shuffle paths into training paths again and first 800 in the test paths uh, and we define the labels uh, the same as we did before. Afterwards we create our own class, we call it Sentry DS, so for Sentry dataset. And the class has some attributes and methods, like attributes like name of the pair, where, where actually the, uh, the name of the picture, what the preprocessor uh, should be, what is the corresponding label index, and so on. And to get this information, you, uh, we, oh, pardon, uh, we define the methods. So if you know object-oriented uh, programming, nothing special happens here. So afterwards, we are going to create a train and a test data set. And uh, we are going also to define the batch size. That's of course something we could do somewhere um, before. It's... So let's see how this looks in code. So it is. Okay. Defining where the pictures are. And in this case, we even print a statement to say uh, that says we loaded all the images from this um, defined directory. Afterwards, we are shuffling. 
to shuffle, we use in this case the function random. We again, we just uh, we uh, store the the shuffled uh, shuffled paths to to variables, uh, train paths and test paths, and then again the uh, the labels. And here is our class. It is the same. Uh, it is description of the class you can uh, um, see above. So afterwards, we are going to create our train and test data set and define the patch. Now that we have it, we are actually going also going to try to run this one. I had also, I think works perfectly. Uh, we, it says we loaded uh, all of the images. Now, afterwards, we want to create a data loader. Data loader, we can create a data loader in just two lines of code. Um, we are creating a train data loader with a data loader um, and we use the train data set the created here, now in our case, or here. Of course, you, you won't use both of, uh, both, uh, both of them, but actually it doesn't really matter. Um, then we use, uh, then we, we define our batch size, 32 in our size, uh, in our case, and we have one more, a more uh, parameter uh, set to true. So shuffle is set to true. What this actually just means that the data will be mixed up differently each time the model goes through the entire data set, meaning through the, all of the, all of the, Batches. In our case, we're gonna have, I think, like 25 batches in a training set and 15 or so in the validation or in the test set, uh, in the test run. So, if you would like, now maybe we would like to see if everything, how, how actually uh, now uh, one one item in this uh, data loader looks like. To do that, you can use this this code here. And what we can see is the, the shape, what uh, 224, 224, for color, and actually uh, an uh, image of the right uh, size. Um, yeah. Now, this line here is actually uh, saying that we are coming to an end to this second part, uh, this second part of the first uh, practical session. Uh, but it, there is still more code here, and this is actually a very simple uh, model we can use now to 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 train, let's say, to train our very first uh, our very first uh, model. We're gonna begin with uh, setting up our working device. So if you have a uh, CUDA enable GPU, you're gonna use GPU, otherwise you're gonna, like me, just use a CPU, I'm working on my laptop. And uh, here in the, the second, a bit longer uh, code block, we are actually um, creating a model, or this is an, uh, this is an uh, architecture of our custom uh, neural network. But uh, you're gonna hear more about it in the in our second session. Now we're gonna just quickly go to the next code block to where we are defining the optimizer and the last function, and then we uh, define the train and evaluation function. Now the train function uh, is actually uh, trains a machine learning model for one complete pass over the data set. So meaning for all the batches. Uh, and the evaluation sets uh, uh, function does a very similar thing. It's just not modifying the model. It's just evaluating the model. So it's going to return uh, the accuracy, how good actually is our um, model working. So let's try this out. I'm a bit curious what happens. So just fast, fast. So we initiated 
all the functions and now we can train the model here. We are calling these both functions for um, three epochs, meaning we're gonna repeat the process three times. That's just very low number, but when you're still working on your code, you're gonna want to use, uh, yeah, you, you will want it to be over fast. <laughs> Uh, so, let's start. As you can see here, like I said, we have 25 batches. This uh, process bar is showing our, our first uh, uh, training run. And afterwards we're going to see the evaluation. Um, the progress bar showing the evaluation process. Now, like I said before, this is a very, very, very basic example. We don't even have any uh, visualizations or in this case, we cannot even see how we won't get an uh, answer how good this first run was. But to do that, we're going to afterwards uh, run it one more time and, and print our accuracy. So now we have to wait for a few minutes. It won't take very long. So, welcome back. Our training process is over, but of course we would like to see how good actually our model is. So what we are doing here, we're going to run the evaluation epoch one more time. This is the thing that happens here with 15, uh, with 15 batches. Uh, and let's just run it. So... And what we're going to print in this case is accuracy, it's just to know how, how, how the model, how good actually the model is. Or not even how good the model is, we cannot say that that's actually too early to, to judge if the model is working good or bad, but we are going to see if model is working at all. So, what do we have here is 81%, that's not bad. We can comfortably say that this uh, this model is learning, is definitely learning something. <laughs> so, thank you for being here with me. I hope you have learned something and I wish you a lot of fun trying, playing around with the image classifier. Bye-bye.